Woods Power Grip Metal Handle Handcuffs come in a variety of sizes and capacities, but regardless of the model, the function and repair of these tools will be the same. Here we will show you how to clean, tear down, and reassemble your handcuff so that you get the most out of your investment. Each tool will have a vacuum pad, a plunger assembly, a handle, a release valve, and a valve guard. The severity of the vacuum leak is going to depend on the severity of the issue. Most often, the vacuum pad is effective first just by the nature of how it's used. The pad will function best when it's clean, so if it's visibly dirty, a mild cleaner like dish soap or Simple Green should be used. You'll never want to use rubber conditioning products as they will cause the pad to become slick. To clean the pad, you should first remove the felt filter so that it doesn't become saturated with water. It's also important not to get water into the suction hole found under the pad filter. Using a wet soapy rag, wipe the pad face down. Each vacuum pad is constructed with up to three raised ribs on the edge of the pad face. These ribs are known as sealing edges. A toothbrush can be used to clean them out. If the sealing edge becomes nicked or cut in any way, the pad will no longer maintain a vacuum seal and will need to be replaced. Once the edges have been cleaned, check for cuts by running your finger along the ribs. Make sure to circle the pad both clockwise and counterclockwise, as going in only one direction may cause you to lay a cut portion over and cause it to go undetected. If there is no damage to the sealing edges, use a lint-free cloth to dry off the pad. Then reinstall the filter. Test the hand cut by attaching it to a clean, non-porous surface for two hours. The red line on the plunger should not reappear. The plunger assembly is the hand cup's vacuum pump, and like any pump, it should be cleaned and serviced. Through use, debris that travels through the filter and into the handle will cause the plunger to become dirty or dry, making it more difficult to bring the cup to full vacuum and even cause it to leak. <laughs> to remove the plunger from the handle, hold onto the assembly and pull it out of the handle. If it's hard to remove, check the outside of the handle to see if there are any dents that might be preventing the plunger from moving freely. If any are found, then the handle should be replaced. After the plunger has been removed, use a soft cloth to wipe both the inside of the handle and the plunger. Look closely at the back of the U-cup at the end of the plunger to make sure it is clean as well. With a flashlight, check the inside of the handle for any scratches. If you find any, it's best to replace the handle since any scratch will prevent the plunger from keeping a tight seal. This means your cup will always show a leak no matter what parts you replace. Once clean, re-lubricate the closed end of the handle using a small swab. WPG offers lube packets for purchase on our website, but you can source a product like Super Lube locally. We do not recommend using spray or water-based lubricants. Reinstall the plunger into the handle. Test your cup as explained earlier. If you found that cleaning your hand cup hasn't improved the leak issues, but instead you've been able to determine that one or more component needs to be replaced, the next few steps will show you how to take your cup apart and reassemble the new parts. To start, remove the two screws that hold the release valve and guard. Then remove the plunger to gain access to the pad screw underneath of it. Now all six of the pad screws should be accessible. Here you'll want to work the valve stem out of the pad nipple. This can be very hard to remove. Be extremely careful. There is a small semi-transparent ball known as a check ball seated in between the valve release and the handle. You do not want to lose this check ball as it's what seals off the vacuum when the cup is attached to a load. With the release valve off, the pad screws can now be removed allowing you to install either a new pad or handle. Reassembly will be the reverse of what you've just completed, 
but there are some tips and tricks to help streamline the process. First, reposition the handle on the pad and install the pad screws. These just need to be hand tight. Now, reinstall the valve stem. A couple of tricks here. Put a tiny amount of lubricant along the valve stem. This will help ease it into the pad nipple. Remember again, do not lose the check ball. Turn the cup sideways so the valve is lying flat in an effort to keep that check ball in its resting location. You can check to see if you've installed the valve block correctly by shining a flashlight into the handle. At the base, you can see where the release valve is offset slightly from the hole at the end of the handle, forming a half moon shape. You can also see the check ball behind both pieces. This moon shape is what prevents the check ball from getting sucked into the hole at the end of the handle and allows the air to move in the correct direction during apply and release. If you see this offset, then no further adjustments need to be made to the release valve. Next, make sure to slide the valve guard in place and reinstall the two screws. Relubricate the inside of the handle the same way explained earlier and reinstall the plunger. Once reassembled, conduct a two-hour leak test. 